I am in Fran San Cisco, and this is my friend. Mm -hmm. She doesn't uh, know how mm -hmm. to program. I mean, you I... took like a CS class, like <laughs> in like high school. I, yeah. That counts, that counts. <laughs> I took the class. The exams were like fill in the blank. Well, yeah, I then, felt, then yeah, you're chilling, you're chilling. <laughs> As an expert game developer myself, I can walk you through the creation of a video game. This is our setup. This project is called Rachel. Right now I'm just loading an image. <laughs> that's how I used to look. You would know, you that's know. That's true, that's true. Are you teaching her pie game? Yeah, I guess so. What's a pie game? Yeah. <laughs> Python has like libraries that you can import and pie game is what you use to draw things to the screen. That doesn't really matter. How long should we give ourselves? What about <laughs> two hours max? If we finish sooner, mm. then we're fine. Okay. What if we don't finish on time? What's gonna happen? Then you fail. Well, like you fail. <laughs> no. So this is a uh, VS code. It's like the, um, where you write code and run it. So if you press F5, you can see we have this uh, square on the screen. <laughs> Yeah. The reason there's a square on the screen is because of all of this. A lot of this you don't have to pay attention to. Like this is basically like initializing things that you never need to touch later. Then this is how you load in images. So what you could do, say you wanted to like change it, you could like edit the image. Okay. Yeah. And then now that is the new image. Crazy. Wow. For now I'll make a tiny square. 32 by 32 pixels. So what this code does is it sets the display to this, which is a color. It's like the RGB values. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, makes right. sense, makes yes, sense? Yes, yes. So it fills the screen white, and then okay. it displays the texture, and then this is the coordinates of the texture that you're displaying. So oh. it's at zero, zero, which is the top left corner of the screen. Hmm. So like, when you do like game engines and stuff, it always has like Y going down. If I set the Y position to like 50, it would be zero pixels from the left and 50 pixels down. Okay. You see? Yeah, you can display a texture at a position. That's kind of the entire fundamental of video games. Do you know what like a wow loop is? Yeah. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> okay. Good, good, good. Wow. Instead of just calling this once, what you can do is you put the display in the wow loop. Since the wow loop is constantly running, every frame you're clearing the screen and then drawing a texture at a position. So this is gonna function exactly the same as it did before. But mm -hmm. what you could also do is like create a variable called like x position and set that equal to like, I guess a zero. Actually, I'll make this y position. If you replace this 50 with y position. It'll be like zero, zero. Yeah, it'll be at zero, zero. So then if you wanna move it, all you have to do is every frame you could set y position equal to y position plus 0.1. Right. So it, basically the velocity is 0.1. Wow. See, isn't that crazy? Now it should mm -hmm. just move right. Then what you can do is put that in if statement. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you press down the right arrow, you add. If you press down the left arrow, you subtract. So this is just a Pygame game thing to check the pressed keys. And you say, if the pressed key is the right key, then you add this to the X position. Yeah, wow. now you can move right. Mm -hmm. Key left. So this exact same thing, but now you can move left. Whoa. We also have the Y position. True. Then, yeah. You can move pretty, down yeah, it's them. pretty intuitive. Mm -hmm. Now we can move around. Crazy, right? Whoa. This is the game, guys. We're done. For Less real. than two hours. It's time to go. go. <laughs> Instead of having it in the top left corner, you can do like the middle of the screen. Okay. So you just take the screen width. Uh-huh, divided by two? Yes. Whoa. And then Whoa. you take the screen height and divide it by two. But if you look at this, it's not perfectly centered. And that's cause like the origin of the square it's is the, the left top corner. left. Yeah, oh. yeah. So then you subtract half of the squares width. So you do minus 32 divided by two. That's so math. I know. A lot of it is just math. And now it's in the middle of the screen. Hmm. We can have like things falling from the screen that you have to like collect or something or mm -hmm. avoid. So you can have like your enemy X position and your enemy Y position. I'll actually make the Y position zero. It's like falling down. True. Or really, but what- you should make it like- You can do negative 32. Yes, that. So yes. you don't see it. Yes. So true, let's go. You do enemy Y position equals enemy Y position plus one. And then you draw another O'Hare texture at the two thing. Whoa, you have to avoid it. Let's go. Let's go. And then if you touch oh. the square, you'd want something to happen. True. So what you can do, this is only half of the collisions, but what it does is if the X positions like oh. touch, then yeah. 
Asking? That happens. You're checking if the right bound of this is greater than the left bound, yeah. and then if the left bound of this is less than the right bound of this. Right. If that happens, I'll just reset the game kind of, but really I'll just reset these values, yeah. And then you kind of just do the same logic for the Y positions. Yeah, so the issue with this is that if you want to make like multiple enemies, you'd basically have to duplicate this for every enemy in your game, which wouldn't make any sense for like big games. So what like you copy do- copy and paste. <laughs> I mean, you could, but that's like really <laughs> bad. <laughs> terrible. Okay, that's terrible. Do you know what a list is? Or like a, <laughs> or like an array, perhaps. Yeah, vaguely, vaguely. Yes. Yeah. What you would normally do is you'd make a class for like an enemy, and then the class you would contain like the position in the class, and you make a list of objects from that class. Okay, let's make a class in Python. Class, <laughs> enemy. Class, enemy. And the enemy will have its own X position and Y position. An enemy is like a type now that you can create. So I'll make a thing called enemies, and you call enemy and you pass in this, and then you pass in negative 32. Okay. It'll create an enemy. Then what I'll do is for enemy in enemies, enemy dot y position plus one. Plus one. Now the enemy should fall. Yeah, so it's like the same thing oh. that we had before. Now you can add another one and it'll just work. Create more enemies? Yes. Now there's two, and Whoa. you can like go through them, you can touch one and you die. The thing that's cool about like loops and stuff is like, instead of like manually creating these, you can like say like for I in range. Wait, is it like when you do like summation thingy and then you have like Yeah, I yeah, so literally the same I thing equals as zero. This. Okay. I'll make an empty list of enemies, and then you do enemies.add, and you do a new enemy, and you set the x position to a random integer between zero and the screen width. Yeah, yeah. Minus 32. 32. If you don't want it to like True. go outside the screen. The y position is just negative 32. Okay. And now Whoa. every time it resets, they should spawn randomly. Whoa. But like say you dodge them all, that's it. There's no like, it doesn't continue. So what you can do is in your enemies, you can check if the y position is greater than four. 80. Basically, if the top of it goes off the screen, then you set enemy.y position to negative 32. Yeah, and then when you randomly generate them, you can also offset this a bit so that they're not all like in the same line or whatever. Now, they're all randomly Whoa. spaced out every time. And then if they go off screen- Whoa. They get put back. Yeah. What I should also do is when they go off screen, then I should regenerate an X position. And now when they go off screen, they respawn at a random position. This is sort of a game, right? Because you can die and stuff, but there's no like objective. So you can make like a score and then the score is just a number. So you just create score equals zero. And then every time one goes off screen, uh -huh. you just can do like score equals score plus one. Uh, here, when you collide with an enemy, this is all the stuff that resets the game. You just do like score equals zero. So now there's a score. You don't see it, but it's like happening. I need a font, I think. Just like with like the textures, you can have a font. Water gallon. Make yeah, it's down on water gallon. <laughs> and this is where I keep all my textures and stuff. Add my font here. You load in the font data slash font.ttf. And this is like the size of the font. You can have like score text equals font.render score. And this is the color. You display the score text and then you set the position. So you can do like zero, comma zero. Oh yeah, it works. Okay. And then if you- think if Oh you wait, is that the score yeah, in the yeah. water gallon font? <laughs> yeah, it is. And see, Whoa, it works. One, the score two. gets added to. Whoa, let's go. So yeah. Very interesting. That, that's a, wait, that's that's cool. a video game. We have like we have so yeah. much left. <laughs> so the two That's so of easy. Them. Yeah, I have to wait for it to be true religions. Yeah, it's so long. Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh my god. Oh. So I think you're a game developer I, now. Yeah, I'm both a gamer and a game developer. Yeah. How was it? I think I'm better than you now. <laughs> probably. Probably. <laughs>